Hello and welcome back to our channel. Now we will talk about creatures that are almost certainly hominins. This is, they share more common features with humans than they do with chimpanzees. We will talk about two types of hominins, archaic and transitional. The former one refers to those organisms who do not show changes in jaw, teeth and body size regarding those observed in modern humans. The latter refers to organisms that seem to be part archaic hominins and part Homo. Before starting, it is important to highlight that the localities where the hominin fossils were found doesn't mean that they necessarily lived or camped there. They were simply places where, for several reasons, such as a rainstorm or predators, some hominin fossils have accumulated. The first type we are going to talk about are the archaic hominins, focusing more on East Central Africa. It all started around 3.9, 4.2 million years ago in Kenya, where we meet our first archaic hominin, Australopithecus anamensis. Although there is not a complete school of this specimen, we know that its canines are chimp-like, but other teeth are much different from those of the chimps. Approximately at the same time, between 3 and 4 million years ago, a new hominin appeared in Tanzania and Ethiopia. It was called Australopithecus afarensis. A part of the collection of fossils found there is the well-known Lucy, of which they discovered half of the skeleton of an adult female individual. Thanks to Lucy, today we can estimate the probable height of Australopithecus afarensis, around 91 and 121 centimeters, kind of a tiny, kind of tiny comparing it with us, modern humans. Its brain is larger than the average brain size of the chimpanzee, and so are the chewing teeth. This may indicate that its diet included harder food than the diet of chimps. The shape and size of the pelvis and lower limbs suggest that Australopithecus afarensis was able to walk bipedally, but probably only for short distances. Moreover, the oldest preserved trails of hominin footprints date from 3.6 million years ago in Tanzania, providing evidence that a contemporary early hominin was able to walk bipedally. The third archaic hominin was found in Ethiopia and dated around 2.5 million years ago. It was called the Australopithecus gari and was the strangest of all. Its limb bones suggested it was a biped, but its chewing teeth are much larger than the other hominins. They found no stone tools with augari fossils, but they found evidence that by that time hominins defleshed animals. The latest archaic hominin to be discovered in Kenya was a new genus and species, Kenyanthropus platyops, dated between 3.3 and 3.5 million years ago. It had a cranium features different from Australopithecus afarensis, as it was flat faces. Apart from this, little is known about this species. The next type we are going to talk about are also archaic hominins, but mostly from South Africa. Ok, so between 3.3 and 2.1 million years ago, a new species called Australopithecus africanus appeared in South Africa, probably at Taung, where a school of an hominin child was discovered in a small cave. Several discoveries later, they discovered new specimens and observed that they were different from Australopithecus africanus. They awarded these to a new genus and species, Paranthropus robustus, which means beside man who probably appeared around 2 or 1.2 million years ago. These hominins recovered from southern African caves cannot be dated as reliably as those discovered in East Africa, the ones we talked earlier. This is because southern African fossils were mixed with other animal bones in caves. Australopithecus africanus had large chewing teeth and its skull wasn't ape-like. It could walk bipedally, but it was also cap capable of climbing trees so it is suggested that its habitat was grassy forest-like. There is no evidence that either Paranthropus robustus nor Australopithecus africanus lived in the caves, so, as we said earlier, it is likely that some predators brought their bones to the caves. Another evidence that Paranthropus robustus and Australopithecus africanus were different species came when they discovered a 1.9 million year old fragmented cranium in Tanzania, East Africa. Since then, more fossils have appeared in Ethiopia, Kenya and Malawi. Some researchers call it Paranthropus boisei. It had larger chewing teeth, but its canines and incisor were small. 
It is thought that its main diet consisted of seeds and fruits with hard outer coverings, meat, plant, food and insects. It was determined as a new species because of the characteristics found in the cranium, mandible and teeth. Its brain size is similar to Australopithecus africanus and, as there are no school remains, we know that its brain size increased throughout the years. Nevertheless, little evidence is found about its posture or locomotion. The last type we are going to talk about are transitional hominins, and if you remember, these ones refer to organisms that seem to be part archaic hominins and part homo. Okay, so a year later in Tanzania, two scientists made the discovery of a much more human-like early hominin than the archaic hominins mentioned before. The first finds were some teeth, part of a cranium, some hand bones, and most of a left foot. Then an incomplete skull of a teenager was discovered, and later on more cranial fragments, lower jaw and teeth. By studying the cranial cavity, they saw evidence of the Broca area, which they believe was the sole control center for the muscles involved in the speech or in speaking. So they established a new species, Homo habilis, within the genus Homo, that dated around 2.4 and 1.6 million years ago. By studying its characteristics, they found it has an upright posture, posture and a fully bipedal locomotion, and its arms were way larger than its legs. Homo habilis is more similar to the Australopithes than to later Homo, as its postcranial skeleton differs very little from them. Several remains suggest that they were capable of manufacture and use simple stone tools. Because of the variable features found in different remains of Homo habilis, researchers now divide it up into two species, Homo habilis proper and Homo rudolfensis, which had a bigger brain, face and chewing teeth. And that was all. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and see you all in the next video. Bye!